What is going on, Jet fans? I am Matt O'Leary back with another video. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about three players who I think is are going to have a bigger role for the New York Jets in 2023 than some people are expecting. Before we get started, Matt O'Leary and why on social media. And don't forget about the Just Jets podcast. Call in and get your questions in. This is the last episode before the season starts. So any last minute preseason predictions you want to get in, Make sure to do so. I'm sure we will be doing a heavy season preview. I'm amped up. Okay, the first player on this list is Jermaine Johnson. And I know what you might be thinking. Well, why would he be included on this list, Matt? He's someone who, you know, we we know about. He was a first-round pick last year. But when you look at what his snaps were last year and then just some other factors, I think he might end up playing more than even we originally thought in year two. So last year... When you look at both Jermaine Johnson and Carl Lawson, here's their snap percentages. Uh, It was 34% of defensive snaps for Jermaine and 58% for Carl Lawson last year in 2022. I am not convinced that Carl Lawson's playing close to 60% of the snaps again. Now, I really like Carl Lawson. I want to make that abundantly clear. I'm a big fan of his game, and I don't just want to toss him away to, to the scrap heap this year, but I think his health last year... He was he was more healthy last year, which is the first year that he was coming back off the Achilles injury than he has been so far in training camp this year. He missed a ton of time with his back. I think they're going to bring him on slowly, so that means that he's not going to play a ton of ton of snaps. So I I think the assumption obviously was for the when you go through the team's starting offensive line, Lawson and JFM are always named as the starting edge rushers, but. I think, you know, obviously McDonald and Huff, they're going to get rotated in a, in a ton, but I think Jermaine deserves to be the number one guy behind that and might even get closer to that 50% number because of Carl Lawson's, you know, just being a little bit banged up so far with his back and maybe he's not fully able to go out of the gate. And also with how good Jermaine Johnson looked so far in training camp in the preseason, He's kind of earned it. Like, he, he deserves to be out there. He's been really good. He had two sacks and six pressures in four games. Like I said, I think he could get close to that 50%. And, I don't know, six-plus sacks after a two-and-a-half sack season last year. I think we could see something around that, which would be, again, a really, really nice step up from him. And I, I just absolutely love what we've seen so far from Jermaine in year two. I think we see a big season. Not, you know, defensive player of the year, not a, necessarily a double-digit sack guy, but just a really solid edge rusher who is good in all three phases. Like, let's be honest with you, like McDonald and Huff, they have that elite speed and the bend off the edge. They are so fun to watch, get after the quarterback, but Jermaine is just a different kind of of player. He's going to beat you with physicality and he is significantly better in the run game. So I think having the edge uh, and being able to set the edge, no pun intended there, Um, for the run game and on early downs is going to get him on the field more, even over guys like Huff and McDonald, who are probably better pass rushers, but not better all-around players, at least not at this point in their career. Next up, I'm going to go Jeremy Ruckert. And I know what you might be thinking. Again, one catch for eight yards last year. Matt, really? This is your guy? Well, he had an incredible game against Miami in the final week of the year as a blocker, and that was kind of the, you know, coming out party, if you will, for Jeremy Ruckert in, in the NFL. He had a really good camp. He finished with four catches and 39 yards in the preseason. But the reason why I think he could play a bigger role, most people are penciling him as tight end three behind C.J. Uzama as tight end two and Tyler Conklin as tight end one. But I think Ruckert ends up being tight end two. And it's something that I've said for a while this offseason and throughout training camp, because if you remember from last year, C.J. Uzama really didn't do all that much early on in the year and was a little bit banged up. He was inactive the second game of the season against the Cleveland Browns last year, and he missed some time uh, early on in training camp. Um, could have that, Some of that could have been load management and just, you know, there's he's a veteran. There's no reason to rush him back. But last year, through the first 11 weeks, he really didn't do all that much. A significant amount of his yardage and production came in the final seven weeks or so of the regular season. So... I think Ruckert can really give Uzama a push there for that role. And Ruckert's the best blocking tight end on the team just in general. So I think that's going to get him on the field a little bit more. And uh, I don't think he has enough to surpass Tyler Conklin, but I do think that 
Uh, we are more likely going into 2024 with a tight end duo of Tyler Conklin and Jeremy Ruckert. I do think you have the ability to get out of one of the con uh, contracts of Conklin and Uzama. So my guess would be that uh, that uh, Uzama is the one that they move on from. And uh, I, I guess I'm a little bit more down on U Uzama than others and not to the point where like, I think he should be off the roster. He's he's pricey, but there is reason to keep him around as that vet and as that, you know, he's a leader in the locker room. He's very, very well respected. I just think that Jeremy is going to give him a big push this year. And the final guy on my list is Xavier Gibson. If you listen to how the New York Jets, pretty much everyone, Rodgers, Randall Cobb, the offensive staff, the head coach, how they all talked about Xavier Gibson was not a surprise that he made this roster. Um, they they love him as a developmental slot. He's a smaller, speedy guy, very different than Jason Brownlee. Those two have been talked about a lot. Uh, and on that last episode of Hard Knocks, you were able to see just how close those two are. You know, both guys undrafted free agents. Um, they met during the, the draft process and got very, very close. And I believe it was a senior bowl or the shrine bowl. One of those games they, they played together. Forgive me. I, I don't remember off the top of my head, which one they were both used in, but uh, they got close and that ended up signing with the same team, which is cool. And both make the roster, but you know, Brownlee's that, that tall jump ball receiver where Gibson is the smaller speedy guy in the slot. You get him the ball in space and let him do, you know, do his damage with the ball in his hands. But he, he finished with nine catches for 97 yards. I think as of right now, he's this team's fifth receiver. And he was a good returner. Five punt returns for 67 yards, three kickoff returns for 84 yards. So that's 13.4 yards per attempt on the punt return and 28 yards per attempt on the kickoff return. And if you look at what Braxton Berrios did for the Jets last year as a returner, it was 23.3 yards per kick return so not as good as gibson and 11.4 yards per punt return not as good as gibson obviously smaller sample size you're looking at a four game sample over a full season but you know it was it was obvious that barrios was not the same guy that he was in 2021 so the jets felt comfortable moving on and gibson is a younger cheaper potentially better option out there for them so uh, i think he you know is definitely utilized as the kick and punt returner yes michael hardman could do that but throughout the preseason and training camp it's felt like xavier gibson has the leg up in that spot and you know he's giving you a little bit of something in the in the preseason and you know playing with zach wilson and tim boyle, boyle versus playing with aaron Rodgers is very very different like gibson's the kind of guy where you can scheme him you know two to three touches a game if you really wanted to uh, and, and just let him work his magic. And I think Rodgers would have an easier time getting the ball to his playmaker in space. So I do think that, you know, Gibson is going to have a bigger role than, you know, some are anticipating, at least, you know, before, or if at all, if they, who knows if they're going to make a move. But a lot of people are rooting for them to make a move for a uh, wide receiver. And even if they do that, I don't think Gibson would be the odd man out off the roster. I think Irv Charles would be would go sooner. And I think Jason Brownlee would go sooner than Xavier Gibson at this point. So those are my three guys. Let me know if you have anyone that you think should be included on this list or players just in general that you think uh, are going to have a bigger role than you know fans or some people are anticipating. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.